This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Wisconsin is coming off another day of record high temperatures for this time of year. Yesterday's highs rose into the 70s as far north as Wausau. Our current stretch of warm weather ensures most northern U.S. cities will end up with one of the warmest winter seasons on record. Meteorological winter is December, January, and February. Meteorologists blame the El Nino weather pattern and climate change. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call is asking the state Supreme Court to take a case that would likely decide if abortion is legal in Wisconsin. Call's petition asked the court to bypass the Court of Appeals and rule on how the state's law should be enforced. A Dane County judge ruled last year Wisconsin law bans feticide but not abortion. Sheboygan County District Attorney Joel Ermanski is also asking the Supreme Court to take the case. Governor Evers is offering Republican state lawmakers a compromise on a plan to clean up PFAS pollution. Evers wants the Department of Natural Resources to have more authority to inspect water on private land. In exchange, Evers is asking the Budget Writing Joint Finance Committee to free up $125 million for grants to clean up pollution in a bill that got final legislative approval last week. The FBI is offering a $15,000 reward for information in the week-long search for a missing boy from Two Rivers. That's on top of the $1,000 reward the local Crime Stoppers chapter is offering. Elijah Vu has been missing since last Tuesday. His mother and her boyfriend are charged with child neglect and are not telling authorities where the three-year-old might be. A bridge that connects southwest Wisconsin to Iowa could be closed for two months. Transportation officials shut down the Blackhawk Bridge over the Mississippi River Sunday after the span was found to be moving slightly. The bridge is almost 100 years old and a replacement is being built nearby. For now, people will have to drive to Prairie du Chien or La Crosse to get across the river. It'll cost you more to get into a Packer game next season, anywhere from 4 to $10 more. The team is sending invoices to season ticket holders online this week. Even preseason games are going up 2 to $5. Even with the price increase, Packers president and CEO Mark Murphy says the cost of a Packer game is still below the NFL average. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WMDX News, I'm Nate Wegehout. A group of buildings on Mifflin Street off the Capitol Square are one step closer to demolition after the City Plan Commission backed the plan Monday night. The Mifflin Arcade contains the former Silver Dollar Tavern, which permanently closed its doors earlier this year. The space will be used as a staging area for future construction of the new Wisconsin History Center. While the lot itself won't be used in the new center, the developers say it could be redeveloped into housing and commercial space in the future. Future. City leaders are looking to improve the way they light the Monona Terrace Tunnel and want your input on how to do it. They say that years of corrosion and stormwater damage has led to over three quarters of the lighting fixtures in the tunnel not working. They've put forward a number of ideas to fix the lighting in the tunnel. You can see the options for yourself and give your thoughts on the project on the Madison Traffic Engineering website. Fitchburg officials say that their city government is in crucial need for more staffing and funding. They say that while their population has grown by over a third over the past decade, their services and city infrastructure have not kept pace. City staff released a report earlier this month outlining six options the city could take to expand their services. They include everything from staffing public safety services and transportation, improving communication and HR, and bringing new leadership roles to various city services. Four-year-old kids in Madison can begin to get enrolled in 4K at the Madison School District for next fall. Kids need to be four years old either on or before September 1st and live within the Madison School District to be eligible to join. They'll be given the opportunity to learn through hands-on play to help build a solid foundation before beginning kindergarten. The district offers half-day and limited full-day 4K throughout Madison. You can enroll your child on the Madison School District website. With Madison on track to having its warmest ever winter on record this year, area businesses are having to adjust their practices to adapt to the lack of cold and snow. One area snow removal and landscaping company told the State Journal that they gave out their earliest ever estimate for landscaping this year last week.
While bait and fishing shops that rely on ice fishing are suffering, other businesses like golf courses are thriving with the early spring. Operation Fresh Start in Madison has a new executive director. Brian McMahon had served as the group's deputy director before moving up to the position. McMahon has been with Operation Fresh Start for over 25 years, serving in several positions throughout the company. Operation Fresh Start has helped connect young adults with careers through education, mentoring, and employment training since 1970. A couple living in a senior your community on Madison's west side have donated half a million dollars to their community to help make them more eco-friendly. John and Margot Hansen are helping to power all 123 homes of Attic Angel Prairie Point with solar power. Their donation will help up to 30 homes install new solar panels. Currently, 46 homes at Attic Angels have solar panels. With the help of the Inflation Reduction Act, the community will get another 150,000 federal dollars to install solar panels. And that that's what you need to know. I'm Nate Wuggy Hout, WMDX News. Mostly sunny and quite a bit colder today. Our high right around 25 this afternoon. The wind northwest at 15 to 25, gusting to 30. That's going to keep the wind chill factor hovering in the single digits to teens most of the day. Tonight, clear 14. Tomorrow, sunny back up to 45 by Friday. Sunshine with a high of 52. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside right now, it's 12. The Bucks sting the Hornets. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Bucks back home in Milwaukee beat the Charlotte Hornets by 38 points, 123 to 85. Chris Middleton still out with an ankle injury. The Bucks have now won three in a row. What's made the difference? Head coach Doc Rivers. I just think it was coming. You know, um, I think health is the biggest difference. You know, everybody's playing other than um, Chris. You know, I think that's one. I think our guys uh, understand since the break we don't have a lot of time. Um, and, and and so we have to get to it, and our guys are starting to do that. Men's college basketball, the Badgers' road game in Indiana delayed 25 minutes in the second half due to an alarm that went off in the arena. Finally, the game resumed, and the Badgers lost to the Hoosiers, 74-70. to Baseball, the Brewers fall to the Angels, 6-4. to NFL, Packers GM Brian Gutekunst asked if Aaron Jones will have to take a pay cut again. I think, you know, we're working through all those conduct. That's part of this, and we just got the cap number, so now we're kind of like, you know, looking at all those things and how it fits and what's going to be best for our football team. But, um, yeah, that's, those, those are our always hard decisions. That's Packers GM Brian Gutekunst with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. I'm Pete with the 60-second Showbiz Beat. After being asked if acting with his daughters is a good way to spend time with them, Adam Sandler says they still don't talk to him. The actor told Yahoo Entertainment at the premiere of his new film, Spaceman, that even though they've been in multiple films together, the girls sometimes don't even respond when he tries to talk to them on the set, attributing their behavior to their age, and not that they might have watched him in the film Jack and Jill. (laughs) Kids are cute. Sony has decided to move up the release of Bad Boys 4 to June 7th. Collider.com reports that the move will pit the film against two other action films, The Crow and The Watcher, which will be released on the same date. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are back again playing crime fighters Mike and Marcus. The film's action sequences are said to be impressive, but will probably not look as real as Will Smith's real-life award show action scenes. Well, in case you haven't heard, The Walking Dead's Rick Grimes is alive and well, as can be expected. The show's latest spinoff, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, premiered Sunday night. In the opening scene, Grimes, played by actor Andrew Lincoln, chopped off his own hand in order to escape captivity. This is The Walking Dead's fifth spinoff and 7,058th amputated body part. Pretty gutsy, but in the opening scene of the series, you never open with a showstopper. You can catch the new spinoff of The Walking Dead Sunday nights on AMC. Taylor Swift's father, Scott, could be in some hot water with Australian authorities. Deadline reports that the sire of the Swift clan is accused of punching a photographer who got a little too close to his daughter in Sydney. The incident happened after Taylor Swift entered a car, which didn't stop two paparazzi members from rushing and shoving her security detail. The Australian leg of the pop star's Eras tour ended Monday night. Helicopter parent much? Movie star Leonardo DiCaprio had some words of wisdom for Timothy Chalamet a few years ago. His advice? No hard drugs and no superhero movies. Leo has never done a Marvel or DC film, and so far, neither has Chalamet. But despite his mentor's advice, that could change. Chalamet told Variety that if the script was right and the director was right, he would have to consider it. 
When asked why, Chalamet explained that it was a superhero movie that made him want to act. Chalamet says when he was 12 years old, he begged his mother to take him to see Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Chalamet says he left the theater a changed man, or boy. No word yet on if the actor has changed his tune on hard drugs. Timothy Chalamet stars in Dune 2, which opens in theaters March 1st. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pichwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.